Hey comrades, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. In this DCS Mil 24P video, we'll explore using the 9114 Sturm anti tank guided missile or ATGM. During the early access period, we'll also add the high explosive warhead version of the Sturm and the more powerful 9M120 Ataka ATGM. Delivery of AT gems in the Hind can either be done through the operator station using the Arduga Daylight Optical Site or from the pilot seat using Petrovich AI. The Sturm and Ataka are effective weapon systems against armored vehicles like main battle tanks, but much depends on the angle of the attack and it may take more than one shot to score a kill. Maximum engagement range is between 4.5 and 5.5 kilometers based on launch conditions. Let's get started. All right, so when using anti-tank guided missiles, we can do so from here in the back seat in the pilot seat or up front in the operator seat. And we're first gonna take a look at it from the operator seat, but I first wanna set up a few switches here in the pilot seat first. Let's put on the uh, red light for Roxanne and zoom in to the weapon panel and we'll set the weapon dial to missile for uh, ATGM and the range source to automatic. Automatic sight and we'll sync it up as well. Let's jump in into the front seat by pressing 2. We'll confirm that the safety switches are all armed and up. Turn on the fan if you wish. And make sure that the USR switch is enabled as well. At this point, let's talk about our new AI system for helicopters that we call Petrovich. So Petrovich is activated through simply a four-way hat switch or four buttons. And you're going to be hearing me talk a lot about Petrovich up, down, left, and right, as well as short and long. Uh, short being uh, less than 0.5 seconds and long being greater than 0.5 seconds. So when we're in forward flight, we have two modes, which are indicated down here, flight mode and combat mode. And these are cycled using Petrovich short left. When we're in flight mode, we can adjust the airspeed and altitude. For airspeed, we see it here as IS in kilometers per hour at 200. We can increase that by going short up or decrease it by going short down. For altitude, if we wanted to change the altitude, we would go long up or if we wanted to decrease the altitude, long down. Naturally, here in the center, we have our current heading 316 degrees, which also lines up with our chevron indicating our current heading. And the double yellow marker here is our command heading. So we can see that our current heading is matching our command heading. At this point, I'm going to uh, come back to it a little bit later when we get into the combat aspect. Uh, to the right, we have the periscope for the weapon site for the ATGMs. And down here to the left is the control box, box for the launchers. If we did a cold start uh, on our way to the target, we'd use the power switch to power things on. We do a test lamp. And here on the dial, we have positions for the eight different rails for the ATGMs and also a separate position to have them off. We're going to go ahead and select number one. And we do that, we see a green light for the missile detected on the launcher and it's ready to go. And each time we fire a missile, we need to come back to that to change to the next station manually. Uh, here we have the uh, sighting panel. And we're really only concerned with uh, two buttons here today, B1 and B2. Uh, so B1 is the uh, power switch. And again, once we uh, take off and when we're on our way to the target, we would uh, initiate the switch. And about three minutes later, uh, the system would be up and running and the ready light here would be illuminated. To the right of that, B2 is the observe switch. We'll click that on. And we do that, it opens the protective covers over the site, as well as unlocking uh, the gimbal system. So. Let's go ahead and look through this, uh, the site. On the left side, we can see our Petrovich display and we're in combat mode, CBTM. In the middle is the site itself. And on the right side, we could hit Windows and H to display uh, some of the more useful keys. To slew the site, we could use the keyboard, we could use the mouse, or in my case, I'm using a joystick. Now, the cool thing is when you're in Petrovich, you can actually set up uh, the axes of the joystick to act independently of flight control. And once you're out of um, the sighting system, then you can uh, go back to using the stick to fly the aircraft. 
we have two different zooms. We'll zoom out and zoom in. At the bottom, we see our indication of degrees off the longitudinal axes of the aircraft. Zero would be on axes. Then you have one for 10, three for 30, and six for 60 degrees. And we're doing your tack run, you'll want to be at, uh, close to zero as possible. So it looks like we have a target out here. So I want to align my attack heading exactly to this target. So to do that, I'll make sure that Petrovich is in combat mode. I'll place the center crosshair over the target and I'll go up along on my Petrovich command. And now it's maneuvering the aircraft to that location. And it's not like a targeting pod, you have to really manually uh, move it around to get what you want it to do. Okay, we have a one, two, I see three targets out here, and I want to go after this one way out here. So again, I'm going to place the crosshair over the target, Petrovich up long to tell the pilot that this is where my target is. And you can think of it this way. In the previous video, when we talked about the uh, ASP-17 uh, weapon site, we had actually two sites on there. We had the uh, standby uh, site, which had two reticles, and then we had what I call essentially a CCIP site. And what we're trying to do here is we need to uh, fly the aircraft such that the CCIP cross is inside that center reticle. And when that happens, we'll have the tone as well as that red light at the top. As my range uh, decreases to the target, I'm continually using the up long to refine his uh, flight path to that target. Now also may notice that off to the left we have a 10 and a 50. Uh, the 10 refers to one kilometer and the 50 refers to five kilometers. And that's a very rough range indication. So if I had a target that filled up the space, that baseline in the line below the 10, that would be about one kilometer from me. Whereas if I have a target that fills up the space in the lines on the 50, that's five kilometers. And as you may recall, the maximum range for these missiles is 4.5 to 5.5 kilometers. But after you do this a while, I think it's become a case too that you'll get to the point that you can say, eh, that, that looks about right. And we're lining these up. It's not going to be just in the center. You want the whole vehicle spanning both the lines as well. Still a little bit short. And naturally, the closer you get, the easier it's going to be to guide the missile. But of course, the closer you get, uh, the more easy target you're going to be as well. So it's a compromise. OK, that's pretty good. So I'm going to do one more refinement. and launch. Okay, got him. So out of the site, observer off, and Petrovich down long to ask him to do a hook turn away from the target as we're receiving fire. And the reason I did the observe so fast is uh, we want to make sure that we close those doors and lock the gimbals before we exceed that 60 degrees and potentially damage the system. And on the HSI, you can see that the command heading and the current heading are just about matched up now. And I probably got a little too close there. Um, I think with practice, a lot of guys can be able to hit targets uh, even further than that. As we're coming back out, we can take a look at uh, something else in that we can use Petrovich to uh, fly to a very specified uh, heading. So we're going to go back to uh, flight mode by going left short. And now going left long or right long, we can move the command heading bug on the HSI. So let's say I want to go to a heading of 180 or 18 on the HSI. I'll go right long and hold it there 
until the command gets to 1.8. Actually, a little too far. Come back. There we go. And you'll see also we have some subtitles up in the corner there. And a little bit later, we'll be, of course be adding those voiceovers, both in Russian and in English. And you can see now that Petrovich has put us on the uh, command heading of 180. Now, if we don't want to give him a command heading that way, we also have another way to do it. So we can go right short, and that brings up a chevron icon in the middle of our field of view. And we can place that where we want him to fly to, and go right short again. And now he goes to that location. And you'll also notice that that location uh, popped up on the HSI as a command heading. Okay, so that's a basic look of using ATGMs from the operator station with Petrovich. Now we're going to look at how to do it from the pilot seat. Now, when using the pilot seat for ATGMs, I think you're going to find this a whole lot easier. Uh, first, let's zoom in to the uh, weapon panel, and we'll select missile from the weapon dial, automatic ranging, Auto sight. Let's lower the uh, glass a bit. And zoom back out. At this point, let's select Petrovich. And you can see we have a very different uh, interface this time. No HSI. Instead, we have a crosshair with three boxes. Uh, the left box indicates our view angle in degrees from center. So we go left in increasing degrees. We go right, we have R in increasing degrees. Middle top is the heading that we are looking and on the right is our look angle up and down. Now up ahead of us and to the left is a group of buildings in front of those buildings are some armored vehicles we're going to go after. So we're going to place a crosshair right in front of those buildings and they go up short. And what that did is it commanded Petrovich to go to observe mode and search for targets in that area and uh, there's actually going to be delay, of course, as you might imagine, for him to look. And he found a tank and an IV, as you can see in the bottom left corner. We can go up and down on the controller to cycle through which one we want. I'll take this IFV1, and then I'll go short right to designate him. At this point, I'll simply fly to place the crosshairs in the center smaller reticle. Got a good tone. and fire. Okay, gain some fire, let's get out of here. And we'll do a second run here in a second. I'll go down short to go out of observe mode. Actually, I probably should have done that right after the attack. And if you were to have a cold start as you're running to the target area, you'd want to hit the command to order Petrovich to activate the weapon systems. Because I did an air start, I did not need to do that. And once you ask him to set up the systems, it'll take about three minutes for him to do so. And we also noticed that in our crosshair in those boxes, they're amber colored. And that's because essentially it's almost like a, a semi-automatic mode in that once you have the alignment of the crosshair with the reticle, it's up to you to pull that trigger to launch that missile. Whereas what we can also do is we can go up long and now they're green. And essentially it's almost like automatic mode in that once the target is in range, and you align the crosshair with the inner reticle, Petrovich will automatically launch that missile for you. And we'll do that in the second target run. And yes, this is a Cypress map. Okay, so again, I'm going to Place my crosshairs up near the target area. 
four short, two tanks, and one more IFE. Let's go for that IFE, uh, second IFE. So we're going to go down short twice to get to him, and then go right short to select him. And now I'm simply going to fly the aircraft to place the inner reticle over the crosshair. And Petrovich launches once he's in range. And again, I want to make sure you stay within 60 degrees of the target or you'll lose that tracking. Okay. So folks, uh, that's a little look at using ATGMs along with Petrovich. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Thanks.